All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about absolute value inequality. So we're going to be using what we learned last week about compound inequalities to do these. Um, so we're kind of combining those two today. So remember when we did absolute value equations, the absolute value of x equal to 2 meant um, that we we're looking for the distance from 0 being 2. So that meant that our answers were 2 and negative 2. We had two solutions. When we have inequalities in absolute values, this is saying the absolute value of x is less than 2. Therefore, the distance between x and 0 is less than 2. So on a number line, I'm going to go ahead and fill in negative 2 to positive 2 here. On a number line, we're saying that it's anything in this range. Okay, and it's not including negative 2 and 2 because it doesn't have the or equal to. This is one of your and compound inequalities from last week. If the absolute value of x is greater than 2, that means the distance between x and 0 is greater than 2. So if I do my same number line here. That means they want it to be larger than 2. So we'd be going in opposite directions here. So this is one of our or compound inequalities. And you're going to have to know that for when we solve these. So less than is and, greater than is or. And that's going to be the very first thing you want to identify when you're doing these problems. So we're just going to do a couple examples. So again, this is just a reminder from the last page. But it's really the most important part when you start these problems. If you have a less than after your absolute value is isolated, then it's an and problem. If you have a greater than, then it's an or problem. So if it is a less than, and in this case it is less than or equal to or less than, um, after you've isolated your absolute value, then when you split it, you actually can just write it as one full inequality, compound inequality. So I'm going to put my positive 2 on the right, like it already was, and my negative 2 on the left. And now I just need to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 7 from all three sections. So this is going to be negative 9 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to negative 5. So on my number line here, I'm using filled in dots because of the or equal to, but we're saying anything on this line here is a solution. All right, second example. This time we have a greater than, so that means this kind of looks like an 11, but it's not. It's a 1 and an absolute value. Um, that means we have an or. So when we split it, we actually do have to split it into two. So we'll have one where it's c minus 1 is greater than or equal to 5, and one where we have to flip the sign. Okay, so less than or equal to negative 5. So it's kind of like when you multiply by a negative, this is your negative value, so you're flipping your sign there also. So at this point, we have to solve these individually. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides and get c is greater than or equal to 6. Again, I'm going to add 1 to both sides and get c is less than or equal to negative 4. So on my number line, that count by twos here. Anything larger than six is a solution, and anything smaller than negative four is a solution. And again, I'm using the filled in dots because we have the or equal to underneath here. So your less than or equal to should be and problems, which means you're uh, figure out where they overlap. Your greater than or equal to's are or problems, and you will have two separate um, directions going on. 
All right, so let's do a problem where it doesn't start isolated for us. So on this one, we have four times the absolute value of 2x minus 5 plus 1 is greater than 21. So first thing we want to do is isolate our absolute value. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So that'll give me 20. And then I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides. All right, and then greater than problems are or problems. Again, that's going to be one of the first things you identify on these um, because you don't want to do it wrong the whole rest of the way down. So this is an or problem because it's a greater than. So I'm going to split it into two where you have 2x minus 5 is greater than 5 and 2x minus 5 is less than negative 5. So then you would solve these by adding 5 to both sides and dividing by 2 on both sides. So in this case, I get x is greater than 5. And then same thing on this one. Add 5 to both sides, divide by 2 on both sides, you get x is less than 0. So this is an or problem. We have less than 0. You want an open dot because it doesn't have the or equal to or greater than 5. So that's what it would look like on a number line. All right, so you do have a big ideas practice to work on today um, called 2.6 practice.